crazy budget shot. Friday night, victims' families unveiled an exhibit called Anonymous Boston. The exhibit shows how homicide victims and their families are sometimes victimized a second time by the media. The media is supposed to educate and inform the people. Instead, what we have is journalistic graffiti. Graffiti that sometimes labels innocent kids as gang members. Because, you know, we're always talking about uh, gang violence. Every time a black child is murdered in the inner city, that's what we automatically assume. Marinova Jones hopes the exhibit will set the record straight. So many of our kids are faceless. We don't know about them. We don't know the human side of them, what they were into, what they like. What we hear is uh, black, probably gang related next onto the weather. News is supposed to be educational and informational. I think the news has become really sensationalized, and I think reporters really now try to see who can be the first with the worst. Yes. Yeah. When we talk about violence, I think too often in a lot of the media coverage, what we present are almost flat characters, and we don't look at the reality of people's lives. And it's just like the person's life fell into a hole. They got shot, they got killed, and that, let's move on to the next story. The details of a victim's life are so extraordinarily important, down to what he wore, to the poetry that he or she wrote, to their friends, to what they did at school, their dreams, their ambitions. Those things are so important when you're talking about coverage. Because you create, instead of a caricature and a stick figure, you have created a human being. Two major newspapers, we'll say names, the Boston Globe and the Boston Herald. Do we own them? Do we predominantly work for them? Do people that look like us, that grew up in our community, that went to Boston public schools, that went to more funerals than graduations for young people? Run these outlets. No. So let's stop being surprised. Right. 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 Because right. they're doing right. what they were designed to do by intention ideologically. The media came to my door. They wouldn't let me sleep. Well, I couldn't sleep anyway. Would you bang my door down? Several calls over and over and over until they tricked one of the kids that opened the door, took a picture of my son, because the media did not have a picture. How do you think I'm supposed to feel when I see my son's picture on the news and I didn't allow you to do it? It's not just knowing the neighborhood. It's within news operations. If you don't have people who look like the victims or who look like people that they're covering to some degree, you're not going to get stories. As one mother said, what made you think this kid is a thug? Uh, what, what did he do to possibly make you conclude that he was a thug? But my son was a good son, and the Herald, what they did with those comments, it shouldn't have been published. Day after day after day after day, I was ridiculed, saying I was a mother of eight. I have two kids. Said I was on welfare. I worked. I went to school. I am educated. Do you believe that if the media portrayed these events with truth and respect and honesty, that these poisonous comments written online will dissolve? I think there's a total link. I think that, you know, I don't have to mention names, but when you have a certain kind of environment, when you have an attitude that, when, I, when, when you have a, an organization where you literally hear out of the mouths of people, Things like innocent people don't get gunned down in, in broad daylight. When you hear things like that out of those reporters, the same things that you hear out of the mouths are, or in the comment threads from their readers. So I, I absolutely think that they're linked without a doubt.